Hello there, my fellow gamers, creators and general notebook aficionados. We are back today with the only 16-inch gaming convertible on the market, the infamous ASUS RG Flow X16. We actually have reviewed one other configuration of this generation quite a while back already. But not only did I selfishly want to spend some more time with it myself, but in addition, the SKU we are dealing with today might be terribly expensive. But it also adds to the base formula that makes the flow special in the first place quite a bit. And price aside, it also makes it a very easy recommendation for actually almost all notebook users. While we have already tested the RTX 4060 version, if you care to spend about 700 euros or dollars more, it will net you pretty much the same machine apart from upgrading the GPU to the laptop RTX 4070, running it up to 120 watts and the 16-inch display to a 240Hz QHD Plus mini LED variant. For now, ASUS has not refreshed the flow for 2024 and it's still running on the Raptor Lake i9 13900H with 32GB of DDR5 4800 RAM and a 1TB SSD. So let's see if a faster GPU and some more eye candy in the screen department are worth your hard-earned cash. And if you followed along with our community posts, I asked you guys what you want to know about this one specifically. So I will also add a new section at the end answering your questions. For those of you that are new to the Flow lineup, it's basically ASUS's take on a super flexible and much more portable version of a powerful gaming and creator notebook. It's also about the only 2-in-1 16-inch with this hardware I can think of out of the top of my head. And while the chassis is still the same since it was first introduced in 2022, it's still a pretty nice one at that. The magnesium alloy shell is sturdy yet relatively lightweight and the whole styling of the flow is still subtle enough to be a great companion for work or study. The biggest novum of the form factor is of course the flippy screen and I would say ASUS found a pretty good compromise with the hinges. There is some wobble when you adjust the heavy glass topped mini LED display, but it's manageable and while there is some give when you pick up the 16 inch with a little too much energy, in most everyday situations it's alright. And it didn't bother me personally while daily driving this puppy. Transforming the flow to all of its different modes is easy enough, but in all honesty it is a pretty cumbersome tablet with its weight and size. I found myself using it in tent mode quite a lot for watching movies or playing controller games. And I could totally see myself using this as a pen tablet when docked to an external screen and a whole set of peripherals. Just keep in mind that you will lose some performance, but more on that later. The port layout is unchanged once again and on the left you get your power connector, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt, the XG Mobile eGPU connector with its additional USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 and an audio combo jack, while a pair of fast USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s and a micro SD card reader on the right complement the solid but relatively average I.O. selection. And if you want to find out more about the chassis, material selection, ports, webcam and maintenance options, I would kindly ask you to check out our initial reviews. I will have them linked in the description below. The first big change from the RTX 4060 SKU is the mini LED display. Even though the panel on this one is an old acquaintance by now, since we have tested it in both the Cephalus Duo 16 and RG M16 already. And well, it's almost got it all. Brightness is excellent in SDR, color gamut is solid and thanks to the flexible backlight, Contrast is way higher than your average single zone IPS screens. Creators will be very happy with reliable color reproduction and in combination with the outstanding HDR capabilities, this display will hardly leave you wanting whatever you plan to do with the flow. In addition, ASUS is still about the only company that lets you switch from multi to single zone backlight, which has a lot of advantages for color critical work. In the CPU department, we can keep it short since the Raptor Lake i9-13900H performs like it should and there isn't really anything new to talk about here. It will be very interesting to see if the Flow lineup will get the Core Ultra or Ryzen 8000 treatment sometime in 2024, or if there will even be a full redesign, but so far this is still your only option when opting for the flexible gamer. System performance is about on par with similarly configured systems, even though the drive and the flow isn't really offering transfer rates to write home about. So let's talk about the second big change, which is the GPU in this higher-end config. The RTX 4070 performs, once again, on par with other slimmer-than-usual hybrid gaming and creator laptops. 
But at least in our synthetics rating, the higher end Nvidia laptop card is only about 10% faster than its smaller sibling, which is actually quite a tough pill to swallow since this is your only option when you really want the mini LED display. The very same story continues in our 1080p rating, in which we test a bunch of older, more CPU bound games and here we get both machines tied once again. And even in much more modern games we get a very inconclusive picture, with sometimes a barely measurable difference in some titles and a very clear win in others. That said, the sleek convertible can handle almost all games without a problem, even in the display's native resolution. And if you do dip below the magical 60fps threshold in recent AAA titles, with the help of DLSS and frame generation you can easily bring things back into smooth territory while taking full advantage of ray tracing and all the other modern graphical treats on offer. Before we continue with our review, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor. Being a creator in today's day and age asks for quite some flexibility. Shooting CES in Vegas, producing content in LA and back to the studio all within a week or two, Nvidia's GPUs and studio validated notebooks are your perfect companions for the traveling creator, ensuring you have all the power you need for even the heaviest applications, while still giving you a plethora of different form factors to suit your budget, way of travel and performance requirements. Need to edit high-res video footage? With powerful hardware media encoders, decoders and deeply embedded GPU acceleration, you are set in your favorite editing software. How about a portable CGI workstation? Well, they've got you covered with high-end RTX 4080 or 4090 equipped performance machines. Or how about some AI-assisted creativity or run locally on your personal machine? Well, not a problem as well. In addition, the Studio Badge also gives you peace of mind, ensuring you get a premium machine with sharp white color gamut displays, generous RAM and SSD configurations, and of course, the latest CPUs to support Team Green's powerful silicon. So if you want to supercharge your creative workflows, check out the links in the description below to learn more and start shopping for your next studio laptop right away with our German retail partner Notebooks Billiger. And now, back to our regular content. Fan noise is pretty alright for the performance you are getting, but as always do not take my word for it and enjoy our noise samples. Before we finally get to your questions, let's quickly brush over battery life and compared to the non-mini LED Prada you lose about 2 hours, with about 7 hours of runtime in our Wi-Fi test in total. But as I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to try to have you guys a little more involved in our reviews, so let's get to your questions and please let me know in the comments if that would be something you would like us to continue in the future. First up we got Scott asking about the pen. Well, I tested the flow with the ASUS ProPen 2.0 and it worked great. In Photoshop, doing some photo editing, I could easily get my work done, even though using the X16 like a normal laptop while doing that is not the most ergonomic position at all. But I did use the RTX 4060 version on a tablet stand with an external keyboard and mouse, basically like a pen tablet, and it worked amazingly well. The only thing I did notice though was that the touchscreen was not very responsive at times, at least while working in Photoshop. I do not know if Adobe or ASUS are at fault here and it's by no means a deal breaker, but still for some of you it might be interesting. Artec asks about specifically using it as a convertible. And I am a little torn on this one. Truth to be told, I mainly used it like a traditional laptop, which is basically without compromise. So you do not have to give up anything and basically get the 2-in-1 functionality as a bonus. But again, in tight spaces, tent mode is actually very handy and if you have a docked with an external screen and peripherals, it's actually awesome to get the keyboard out of the way. Performance on battery was requested as well and we got the following results in Cinebench and 3 Max Times by when in performance mode. Some of you also wanted to know if performance is affected in different modes and apart from the full on tablet mode, it performs pretty much the same. Using it as a giant tablet though limits the power levels to 55 watts for both the GPU and CPU. It is a little bit inconsistent for when it kicks in, but there seems to be a sensor in the hinge that detects when it is folded to a certain angle. 
Speaker quality was another question and here you get the X16 compared to a recent MacBook Pro 14. Let me know in the comments which one you like more. And last but not least, the texture on the trackpad is of course below the glass. And I actually really like this one, since it has a very smooth feel to it. And here you get a shot of the textured display lid. That should be it for today. Please do not be mad if I skip your question. And feel free to post them below and I will do my very best to answer them all. So what do we think about the X16? Well, if you want it all, a sleek chassis, a spectacular display, a flexible form factor and enough performance for both games and creative work, it is hard to beat this one right now. There are a few competitors if you do not care about the 2-in-1 functionality, like the Yoga Pro 9i, Legion Slim 7, Omen Transcend or XMG Pro 16 Studio. But none of them is as fully featured like the X16 is, even though they are able to squeeze a bit more performance out of the RTX 4070. And it seems like ASUS knows that as well and the flow is priced accordingly. But if you are prepared to swallow that, this is an amazing piece of tech. But let me know what you think, sound off in the comments below. And again, since this was basically just a review update, please check out our original reviews both here on YouTube and on the website for the Flow X16, linked in the description. As always, thanks a ton for your time, please hit that like and sub button on your way out. My name is Alex and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.